soon. Hello, and welcome back to the Lost Legends of Scadrial Mistborn Adventure Game Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Trevor, and with me I have the Fluffles Gang. I am John, I go by Clover My Online, and I play Tony Darkomancy. I'm David, and I play Lord Falco. My name is Brian, and my character's called Tajmil. I'm Kelly, and I play Merida. Let's jump back in. Uh, I think we're going to start with Tajmil. Uh, heading down this staircase, Tajmil, what what order would you be most comfortable going down? Would you be at the front, at the back? I mean, I don't really mind. I can I can take the front. Okay, so you come down into this basement, and uh, one of the things that you notice is that it's a little more well put together than the one uh, at Alloy's was. Um, Alloy did have all of that metal surrounding it, but here... Um, you can definitely tell that, like, this is supposed to be a little more uh, of an f- official kind of room. Uh, I don't know. It wouldn't be the right term, but um, there's a finished floor. Um, there's obvious walls and an obvious ceiling that's been built down here. It's not just a cavern that's been made and then partially finished with furniture put into it. Um, you notice as you come down that on the far side of the wall is an alimantic table. Um, kind of set into the wall made of many different metals. Um, there is another desk down here. Um, there is a small chest, and uh, that appears to be the extent of what's in the room other than normal furniture. Okay, when you say that it's made of various metals, is there any uh, metals that are of like significant value there? Uh, so let me go ahead and show you what it is that I'm talking about. Give me just a moment. Okay. I'm guessing it's like a crafting table from uh, Minecraft. No, it's like a chart. It's like the periodic table, except for magic. Oh, that's kind of badass. Yeah, I'm sending it to you now, direct message. Uh, So basically, this shows all of the different alimantic metals and what their use is. Um, I mean, it doesn't show what their use is, but it shows the symbol for them, and each of these symbols are made out of the metal that it represents. So the tin symbol is made of tin, the steel is made of steel, the iron is made of iron. And and this has been, like, set into the wall. Okay. Um, I'm not... Oh, there it is. Oh, I was like... Okay. So this has got some... uh... I, I'm I'm confused as far as the significance of it, and I know that this is probably if I read the books, it'd be easier to understand. But I mean, is this like something that is of value? Um, not necessarily. I mean, there's gold that's been inlaid into the gold symbol, but once you got it out, you're not sure that it would be an actual, uh, like okay. an actual good amount of gold worth your time like picking it out of the wall yeah um and then you said that this room is empty pretty much uh there's a desk there's a chest um there's like a couple of chairs and there's this this big emblazon on the wall okay so then let let me try and pick the chest or or see what i could do with the chest if they're because uh you open up the chest it is not locked Okay. You notice that inside is mostly regular um, medical supplies, bandages, antiseptic, what the heck? Um, different uh, basic ba- first aid uh, yeah. things like that. So, what? I'm kind of confused as far as like what this room is being used for. It seems like it's something more sinister, though, based on the you know stuff we're finding. Is that um, lady with me? Uh, Lady Fatine is, yeah. You've got okay. uh, Glim, uh, not Glim, you've got Taman, Liv, Lady Fatine, Snee, and yourself. Okay. So, I'm gonna ask them, like, uh, guys, <laughs> is any of this stuff making sense to you? Like, there's medical supplies, there's all this stuff, I'm waiting to have some spooky painting with eyeballs that follow you as you go across the room. 
Hmm. Well, I'm not finding anything in this desk. It seems to be mostly just used for writing, and then there's the drawers are empty other than basic writing supplies. Uh, I'm really not sure if it seems like this would be the spot if it was supposed to be. Um, Liv I? and uh, Tesney uh, don't respond. They're both staring at the uh, table of medals on the wall. Can I feel anything? Like, is there any hidden doors, like hinges that are made out of steel, or see any blue lines? Um, you uh, you start uh, burning your steel, and go ahead and give me a steel pushing roll. Five dice. Okay. Um, I got two twos, a one, a six, and a three. Um, so you notice, uh, very faintly that there are a couple of the lines, um, pointing to the metals on the wall that are a little bit, um, str like, str thicker than the other ones. One of them is the one that points to steel. Okay. Uh, another one points to pewter, uh, another one points to iron, and, um... That is it in terms of the uh, ones that stand out to you. So wait a minute, because of those are all, doesn't pewter contain iron? And I mean, steel obviously does, and iron is iron. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I didn't all know of the if that was different going alloys to play into each other as far as the magics go. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if that's what I was detecting from them since there were steel and iron and then pewter. Uh, mostly in as much as the ones that are alloys of the other metal, generally speaking, have um, the like other opposite pair. effects. Oh. Now, this table, this specific table that you're showing, right? It's cut out like that? Uh, yeah, it's kind of arranged in the same pattern um, so where... There's um, four medals that are missing from it. Okay, and then, oh man, I gotta do some comparative analysis right now. So then... Uh, the medals that are missing, um, I'll just kind of metagame this. Those are just the medals that haven't been discovered yet. Oh, okay. Alright, never mind then. Um, I didn't know if it was something we were like supposed to find a puzzle piece. Um, so... Uh... Can I go over and examine those, the, the, the iron, the steel, and the pewter, and see what they do? Like, if they have any give to them, if they feel like that they're like a facade for a hidden button or compartment or something? Um, yeah, uh, give me a wits roll. So, that is... Okay, I got two fours, a three, and a six. Okay, um, you notice that um, you go up and you kind of touch each of them, and you push on each of them. You feel a small amount of give when you push directly on the pewter arm one, but not much. And so um, you feel out alimantically and aren't able to push on any of them except for the steel one, where you start to push on it, and just like before, you feel a mechanism kind of give way beneath your push. And then suddenly the symbol itself... Uh, seems to shift a little bit, and you're able to reach up and pull the steel symbol out of the wall. What's behind it? Uh, it just seems to be like an impression where it can go, and there's a couple of slots that seem to, you would assume, work kind of like a key would um, in the wall. For holding on the uh, placard? Yeah, like, um, okay. like there's slots on the back of the uh, steel symbol that appear to go into these holes and either prevent something from moving as it's supposed to, or click something out of the way. You're not sure which. Okay. But there's um, definitely some sort of mechanism that this was either blocking or enabling. So did anything in the room change? Did I hear any, any like release of a, of a, of a triggering mechanism or something? Uh, not other than the one in the steel symbol, but as you do that, Tessany comes up, and you hear a faint click, and he pulls his symbol as well. And um, Lady Fatine see. walks up to the pewter one, and you see her put her fingers on the outside of it and kind of strain for a moment until it kind of gave gives way a little bit, and then she's able to pull her symbol out as well. 
Um, once all three of those symbols have been pulled out of the uh, table, um, it kind of like cracks in the middle and starts to open up. And that's the point, I think, where we're going to uh, jump over to Lord Falcone. Um, Lord Falcone, as you look down the hallway, you see Glim and the guard um, kind of running back this way towards the um, other end, and they seem to be shouting uh, excitedly. Okay, Lord Falcone's just going to like sit late against the wall, looking dazed, kind of like holding his head a little bit. Okay, um, as they run up, um, the one that isn't Glim, uh, they're both holding spears, but the other one, um, as he gets closer, he looks at the wall um, and sees the hole in the door and then looks at you, and he lowers his spear at you, and he says, What's going on here? What did you do? I was just trying to walk back and get some air and away from the party. I, I don't do well the things, and there's a group of four or five armed thugs. They... I couldn't stop them. They beat me unconscious, and they're looting the rooms. They went uh, down the hallway that way, and I'll point kind of uh, to the way that we came through. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a charm roll. Uh, and I'm going to make this plus two, or plus one yep. for your network. I got nothing. Let me see what Glenn can come up with. The NPCs keep saving you guys. <laughs> Pair of fours and two nudges. <clears throat> Listen, you, you don't have to trust his word. I'll stay here with him. Make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Stan, look out here. You head down the hall and investigate what he's talking about. And um, the guard kind of, like, turns and nods towards him as Glim lowers his spear um, towards you and, like, keeps it hovering right above your chest. And the other guard takes off down the hallway. Uh, Tajmil, give me a spirit roll. So seven? Or no, five. Uh, five. five. Ooh, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Hold on. Uh, two threes, a two, a six, and a four. Falcom, you hear from around the corner of the hall the sound of somebody coming crashing to the ground followed by a great deal of cursing um, and the scattering of glass marbles. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, so the guard runs around the corner, and you hear him start crashing to the ground. Oh, no. Tripping all over these marbles. Okay, so at least he thinks that they did go that way, maybe. Uh, as soon as the guard gets around the corner and they hear that crash, uh, Glim waits another like minute to listen for it, like echoing down the hall as the guard gets further away, and then he lifts his spear up, and uh, extends a hand to you to offer to pull you to your feet. Thank you. Uh, I thought I might convince him a little more easily, but at least he's in the wrong direction. Uh, how much longer do you think they're going to be down there? There actually seems to be a fire going on. He's going to be back this way before long. Wait, he's he. Well, you don't think he'll be a little bit consumed by the urgency of the fire? I mean, maybe, but we were coming back here to secure this room. He was adamant about that. Well, hopefully he has to come back here, see what's going on here. You can give him the all clear again, and uh, then maybe send him to go find some higher up to figure out what to do. We can push his indecision and kind of make him waste time, and hopefully the crew can get what they need done. Do you think I should go try and help him, or? Um, I it's, I I don't know. I I can't let you go in case he comes back. So it's probably best that you just stay here and we wait for them, and then figure out where to go from there. Okay, sounds good. And if we have to, uh, maybe we can drag him back in this room and knock him unconscious. I guess worst case scenario. That's a plan. Yeah, get him um, to come down to me, to... and I'll wrestle him. And we're going to go ahead and jump over to uh, Merida and Tony, where the uh, fire has been started on the curtain, um, and is slowly getting bigger. Um, Tony will scream, fire! And quick, get water! And he runs over to the nearest table that has water, 
and then tries to throw it on the fire. Um, give me a spirit roll. It's four, right? Yep. Yes. Got fours. Um, so you walk over and you manage to find a table that, um, nearby that has, like, a, um, bowl full of ice that has kind of melted down towards water. Um, and you make it over and you're able to put a good deal of the uh, fire out. So there's only a small bit of it left burning towards the top of the curtain. This is like Tony against Merida. <laughs> Uh, in the background, guests are starting to get up and point, and um, the a cacophony is starting to grow as more people realize what's going on um, and start to get up and start running for the exit, um, causing quite a disturbance. Yeah, I think Merida is going to add to it and just scream, um, evacuate to everyone. Uh, Merida, go ahead and give me a charm roll. Uh, what is that again? Uh, five. Uh, I'm going to give you a main minus one because you're easy to overlook. That's fair. I got two twos. Okay, Um. so yeah, you're able to like pick out one of the tables that doesn't seem to be reacting as much. And you run over to it and kind of like start yelling hysterically and motioning towards the door. And you get them going a little bit more too, so there's... um. Less of a controlled hurry and more of a flood, and some of the tables are starting to get knocked out of the way or knocked over. Um, chairs are toppling, and the guards are kind of like rushing back and forth, not quite sure what to do to stop the chaos. She's also going to go over to Tony and start like pulling him away from the table so he doesn't put out more of the fire. Um, Tony, what are you doing? Tony's running to go get more water to put out the fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we'll do physique versus physique. Sure. Okay. Uh, just a nudge. Hold on. Uh, I got two ones. Okay, so Merida, you kind of like run up and like grab hold of him. And, like, keep him in place while pretending to sort of be hysterical about it. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to do to try and, like, refocus him on something else? Or are you just going to be, like, holding on to him for now? I think I'm going to be like, oh my god, look, Fluffles, he's right by the fire. He looks like he needs <gasps> help. Fluffles! And she's going to go with him to try to get Fluffles and take him out of the manor. Um, both, uh, Tony, give me a rioting roll, and Merida, give me a physique roll. Uh, Tony, or Tony, you're going along with that, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Why am I rioting? Um, I'm, I'm starting to, like, make this something that Tony is unconsciously doing to get Fluffles to do what he wants him to do. I got two fives. I've got fours and two nudges. Okay, so uh, Merida, you start, like, pushing on the back of Fluffles to get him started in the right direction. Um, and Tony, like, feeling the urgency of the situation, um, intuitively starts riding on Fluffles' sense of, like, urgency and restlessness. And so Fluffles starts moving with you guys away from the fire and towards the edge of the stage. Nice. Um, we can go ahead and pause that for a moment, and we will jump back over to Brian. Uh, Tajmil, um, the, the symbol, uh, the table that's in front of you on the wall, um, the front of it swings open on either side, sort of splitting in the middle, um, and inside of this secret compartment, uh, you see a large jar that appears at first glance to just be full of blood. Okay, um, go over and taste it, or... <laughs> you just open it up and taste it. Smell it. Smell it first. But uh, um, I'm... You walk over and you pick up this jar, and the viscosity of it definitely reminds you of blood. But as you pick it up, you feel something shift and clink um, and, re and s settle against each other uh, inside of this jar. Uh, you open up the top. Um, you definitely get a strong odor of blood as you open it. And as you look in and you see the blood sort of um, ooze around, uh, you see the glint of metal spikes inside of the blood. 
Okay. Um, and these are al uh, what is it called? Uh, Mysteries. <clears throat> yeah, the thing, the thing that you told me about that they put the spikes in their eyes. Yeah, these are Inquisitor spikes. Oh, these are. So these oh. have some value to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pocket that shit. Well, not just value. That's what we're there to steal. I'm gonna definitely pocket that shit and make my way back out. In it. well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Cause see, I've got that bag of flour and another. Th one thing. So, can I somehow set up a makeshift trap for someone <laughs> that might come back through there to check on their beloved yeah, um, in the room that their led beloved bottle of blood. Their beloved bottle of blood and they get hit in the face with a bag of rocks and flour? Um, sure. Lady Fatine, um, as you like, stop, is going to come up. Um, we, is that what we're looking for? Is the book there? Yeah, let's grab that thing too. It's got to be worth at least a couple of clips. Um, you look over and <laughs> you don't see any book inside of this alcove. Um, he wanted the book most of, of all. Wait a second, then. Um, so then, what? What? what where? Could, where else could the book possibly be? That. Well, I'm certain it's not in the desk down here. We can keep checking in the room upstairs. Was there something else you were doing here? Just preparing a trap. Well, here, give me the spikes, and we'll meet you upstairs. I'll and keep looking hold on to those things for the time being. Trust me, I got plenty of room in these pockets of my coat. It's a fairly large jar. Like I'll put. All right, perfect. Like the, the I have size of one of the spikes. Uh, well, of several of them in there are like the circumference of your eye. Oh, so then, can I take the spikes out? Um, you could, but you will have to be pulling them out of blood. Oh, that's fine. I like, mean... it's not gonna be an easy process that's... Wait, what is blood. that What does that mean, like, pulling them out of blood? You mean well, literally? You're not gonna be able to do this without getting your hands literally dirty. Oh, that's fine. That's some... Like, you're gonna, you're gonna be covered in blood, both your hands, your outfit, yeah, it's... like... It's going to be obvious that like you have been splashing yeah, around fine. in blood. Yeah, I, think, I mean, it's typical like that. Now, let me ask you this, all right? What if I do this? I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm going to lay that on the ground, and I'm going to pour the blood all over it to try and evenly stain the entire jacket with blood. Just hear me out. Just hear me. And then I'll put the spikes in one of my pockets, then. Um, you go to start, like, doing this, and, like, as you start to tip the jar, Lady Fatine, oh, shit. uh, grabs your arm, and she says, if they're in the blood, it's for a reason. Oh. We don't want to mess this up. We want to get these safe to Alloy. <laughs> okay, so then I, all right, so then let's just go upstairs. I'll still just hold on to the spikes, and. Very well. Then, um, she's gonna head up the stairs first. Okay. Um. Are you going to wait, uh, go in the middle, or wait for everybody else to head up? I'll wait for everybody else, because I'll have to arm that trap for the swinging, uh -huh. the, uh, the bag of flour thing and stuff. Tajmil, I don't want to leave you alone down there with the spikes. Either come up with us now, or give me the spikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hold, hold on. And then I'm just finishing it, no, and it's like, okay, wondering. all right, go. And then, and then, then on the way up, then it's try. It's yeah. they're they're not gonna like wait for they're you to do corner. it. They're, they're, yeah. She's yeah, gonna I be down there with you until the spikes come up, or she's gonna just like, if you want so to get she's gonna done, be behind yeah. me. Okay, well then, here's what you need to do. You see that uh, stick right there okay, on the ground? Sorry, just yeah. put that against the 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 string running up to. Yep. Yep, Not just like that. Now hold on. Yeah, Put push it on the string. Keep a little tension on it. Okay, now set the stick on Give me a physique under. roll. Physique roll is a four. Wait, what is this? What is this primarily for? She's gonna hit you. Oh, she is. Well, she's probably gonna either that or she's just gonna take the spike. Yeah. I got two threes, a six, and a two. Um, you feel a hand. Uh, circle around your neck and shove you up against the wall. And she uh, goes eye to eye with you and stares you dead in the eye and she says, hand over the spikes or it's the end of the line for you. Um, ooh, lady. I don't know if you want to do this. 
So can I take my entire sack of copper clippings and like throw them at her and push her into the wall, penetrating her chest and completely removing her heart and she dies instantly? <laughs> no, you you won't happen that easily. Uh, first, take two points of damage. Ooh, ouch. Nasty lady. I knew she couldn't be trusted. Who is this lady again? <laughs> Uh, and then give me a steel pushing roll. So five. Would it be applicable to have six in this one because I got quick hands? Um, sure. I'll give that to you. I feel like she's how our team would be if we were less lenient with him. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got two fours, two twos, a six, and a three. Okay, um, she's going to grunt as a couple of the coins find purchase and start digging themselves into her flesh. And then um, <laughs> she's going to call out, Tessney, I need you here. And then she's going to bring her other arm around and just go to punch you. Um, we're going to treat this as combat from here on in. Um, so I'm going to say that she declared the first there. Um, you can declare what you want to do. We'll go ahead and um, build dice pools from there. Oh boy, so we're finally, this is when the shit hits the fan? <laughs> Pull out your marbles. <laughs> well, I just want to hold on to him. I don't trust this lady. Redemption it's not hierarchy. not holding on to it. It's the fact that you keep trying to do Force the trap, nice. and she's like, you're wasting time. To well, be I just fair, to do like the, uh, the first time you met this lady, you definitely robbed her. Well, yeah, but that you, you say that about well, anybody. Before then. you met this particular one, she wasn't at the first robbery, or it wouldn't have gone down easy. Oh well, yeah, then it would have actually been a a fight. <clears throat> Wait, you're saying without her, it would have been a fight? Because it seems like with her, it kind of still is a fight. Without her, it went easy. Oh, okay. Um. So then we're in. Combat. They're the people we robbed the ATM from. Okay, so I gotta clear the mental man out right here or die trying, basically. Oh man. Where where is Lord Falcon? Or you could just give him the spikes. Uh he's upstairs. Okay. I feel like Merida's the only one that she has a good impression of. I'm gonna take one <coughs> one of my uh moves, I guess, and can I send uh Sonichu towards the top of the stairs saying follow? Sure, and then I'll give you some uh, defensive dice for your physique. Okay. Um. So we'll go ahead, and we will. You'll have four dice to defend against her nine. Oh Christ! I'm gonna die. You could give up now. But then she's gonna rob us. She's not gonna rob us. We're part of a team. You guys actually trust her? Okay. Yeah. Okay, well then. No, all right. Lord Falcon doesn't, but you don't. That's for See, that's, different. Oh, yeah, man. I don't know. Okay. Well, I I I need to know because I'm about ready to probably end up dying. Manda trusts them a little. Really, your defense We're all dice. one team. What? Three defense dice. Uh, no. four defense dice. <laughs> Against nine, yeah, that doesn't seem like that's a very good. You can still um, get lucky. Ooh, you're okay. I'm gonna listen to Mary. David, David's I'm, like, I'm hoping he gets taken I, out. I'm gonna, yeah, he wants limb job back. As soon it's as been David like that, 17 say, episodes since there is combat. I'm gonna say, No, we had the one against the merchants. Oh, that's I'm gonna true, brush yeah. off. I'm gonna be like, all, all right, lady, listen. So long as you promise not to ream my ass out, I'll let you hold on to these spikes. All right, what'd you roll but for it, your defense dice? Still. Yeah, still. All right. I got to re-roll on it, though. I got two fives, a six, and a three. Uh, she goes to punch you, and at the last possible second, you're able to whip your head out of the way, and her uh, fist slams into the wall behind you, and you see a cloud of dust go up where her hand hits. What is this lady? I thought she... What? Like the Incredible Hulk or something? She's what I pretend to be. Yes, kind of. Oh, okay. That's a pewter arm then, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. I, I, she has super strength. 
I didn't realize that, or else I might have rethought this uh, <laughs> entire scenario. That fits in well with your character, I feel. True that. True that. She is All technically right, at points stronger than Lord Falcombe, so yeah, good luck. Ooh, um, I did, um, well, say you're sorry. <laughs> now, uh, the next round, she is going to ignore trying to punch you, and she's just going to increase her chill cold on you. Wait, she's choking me right now. I thought I pushed her off. Uh, no, she still held on. She oh. just took two points of damage. Insert Sasuke meme right here. What's Sasuke? A Naruto character. Never mind. Oh. Wait, Listen. how does this relate to Sasuke? The Sasuke meme where he's getting choked out. Uh, or I forget what it is. Uh, anyways. Onward. Oh, man. You, okay... Meta right now, do you know what I'm going to probably do is be like, listen, lady, you know, this is an understanding. But do you know what Tajmil really would do in this situation? Get beat up. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but besides that, besides that, <laughs> I'd probably smash the jar on the ground. Oh, please don't. I probably, uh, I think, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash a jar on the ground. What do I roll on that? Lord Falcon, why did you leave him alone? <laughs> they wanted me to stay up here. Oh, wait, can I, can I tell her that, like, before I do that? Like, listen, uh, you might not want to do this, because this thing's about to slip out of my hand. Um, it's up to you. If you want oh, to spend a ground... Well, I, Trevor, I don't know the here. repercussions of this. What would this do? I don't... I mean, I want this to be, like, a fucking situation that is not gonna end up destroying everything, but it's still, like, a memorable shit show. I mean, if if we're really and truly metagaming, this is not something that Tajmil would know. But oh, the reason no. they're stored in blood is because anytime they're outside of a body, they decay in their magical properties. Oh man! Ah, oh, shoot, man! I don't know what to do, guys. What can it? Can we met it? Can I met the group? Because I'm really leaning towards. Just give them the spikes and say sorry. What do you yeah, say? Yeah, my I would say submit. Tap on the wall, uncle. Whatever it is you need to do to get them to know you're surrendering. Okay, what if I smash them and shove them into myself? Won't that give me like superpowers then? Oh, God. Uh, I don't think Kajmiel would know that, and it, it is a very delicate art. Oh, you can't You just... could turn yourself into a monster, literally. I feel like I'm already halfway there, given the source of, a, <laughs> of events have just been God happening. No, I mean as in, like, lose your sanity, oh. you transform into, like, an ugly thing, and be unable to speak. Yeah, you can't miss what you never had. Um, oh, shoot. Trevor, you know, I'm going to say, listen, lady, listen. If you don't get your grubby mitts off me, this jar right here is going to be smashed into a billion pieces. So if you want to keep your precious spikes intact and not lose their, their value, then I suggest that you take a step back and evaluate what you're doing. Uh, give me a physique roll of four. Not all of us, just Tajmu. Probably, probably. I mean, Alloy's gonna kill us. Yeah, oh, there's shit. that omnipresent threat that none of us have really stopped to consider. I've been considering it this whole situation. Oh, I, I have too, and I think Lord Falcombe has, but I don't know. I I just want to carry the spikes. I don't want this lady's grubby mitts all over them. They've been all over my neck, and you know I don't want that disgusting stuff getting on them. Well, you know what you could do? You could die right now, and then you could die having held them. What was your uh, dice roll? Oh, I had uh, two fives, a three, and a six. Okay, um, you feel her hands tighten around your neck, uh, but you get a fierce look of uh, determination in your eye. And you start staring at her straight back, and you take no damage. Oh, shit. Um, so, oh, man. See, like, I'm so confused in this entire situation. 
Why is it that she wants to hold on to them so much? Because you're taking so much time. Because you are literally the least trustworthy person they know. What are you talking That's about, true. Lord Falcone? We're on a redemption hierarchy now, bud. I mean, Falcone <laughs> is on the redemption hierarchy, but like, he's not there I right mean, now. I mean, you got a fresh start. You got a new set of skin, my friend. But if, if I think that this goes against the redemption hierarchy. But I don't want to have some... But it's hard to say what part of redemption involves stealing from the Lord Mistborn. Because he's that actually stealing for a purpose instead of just to, like, fulfill yeah. his kleptomania. <laughs> um, um, so we don't really know what the purpose is. Let's go ahead and we'll pause right there um, and at least touch base with Tony and Merida. Are you two doing anything else or are you mission accomplished and you're skedaddling? Uh, I don't think we're leaving. I think we're staying outside of the manor as it burns. Oh, shit. So the well, building no, we're on is on as, fire, too. Crap, I forgot. As soon as Fluffles is to safety, Tony's going to rush back and try and put out the fire again. Okay, well, she's going to stop him. Uh, in what way are you trying to stop him? I'm going to, like, physically try to stop him and pull him back. Okay, um, I'm going to make this another physique versus physique, but I'm going to give you a negative one this time because Tony has kind of recovered from the shock of it, and you're just going to have a harder time, like, stopping somebody who is the larger person than you. Okay. The two weakest characters face off in strength again. Because Tony's, like, 6'2". He's very tall. I've got threes. So you win. Um, so yeah, Tony, you're able to go forward. You're not able to find any of the bowls like you did, but you start collecting cups, and it feels like you're at least keeping it from growing, even if you're not putting it out. And then Tony's also going to simultaneously uh, riot the sense of courage in all, all the guards. Okay. Um, I guess yeah. Merida's just going to chill with Fluffles outside. All right, um, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Uh, we'll come back to Tony in a bit, give him a chance to get this fire under control. I think that's uh, a beautiful Lord Falcom, cinematic thing is to flash from like the little slap fight in the water collection back to uh, freaking Taj Meal getting choked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Live we're we're actually going to come to you ne uh, next, Falcom. Um, you hear the flapping of wings and uh, Sanachu going between Octon and Follow um, as he flies over towards you and like lands on your shoulder. Um, at that same moment, um, you see Tesni, who was halfway up the stairs, um, suddenly look over at you and then drop the rest of the way back down um, into the, uh, the downstairs where just Lady Fatine, Tajmil, and Tesni are at the moment. Where'd our smoker go? Uh, he's up up in the room now. Um, him and the Tin Eye both came upstairs. Okay, so they're both with me and uh, Glim. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna say, do we need to go back down? Um, Taman is gonna look over at you and he's gonna shake his head. Um, and he's gonna take a deliberate step to be standing in front of the uh, stair staircase going down. Did we get what we needed? It's uh, th in the final steps of acquisition. There's only one issue left to be resolved. What's the issue? Uh, I believe that Tesney already talked to you about the issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so what the look was about. We have the spikes and the book. Um, there's no book. Did you search thoroughly, or? Uh, we both, uh, Liv and Lady Fatine searched the only desk down there. We found the secret compartment that had the spikes. There's no book that we can find. Unless you think you missed something in the desk, it's not in here. Would Falcombe think the papers he got from the desk would be the book, or were those just um, related? Did you take any time to read them? Or no, did you put no, them like he quickly just stashed them. 
um, then that's up to you as to whether you want to speculate or not. He's he's going to say <laughs> there was just a sheaf of papers, nothing like a book like that Alloy would want. We can check it when we get out, but I don't think this is what we were looking for. I know Alloy wanted everything to be perfect, but half is better than nothing, so I say once we finalize what's going on downstairs, we get out of here. <laughs> so, like, I'm literally holding up this entire thing with just the stupidity. Don't you usually? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. All right. Is lo So, Lord Falk... <laughs> Is Lord Falcone downstairs? Can he see this this disaster film of me getting my ass kicked going on? He, he uh, he's still upstairs so far. He's gonna trust. Oh. He's gonna trust that they uh know what they're doing, and he has to. St <laughs> he he has to stay there to play his part. Okay. <clears throat> Wait. Well, you didn't even listen to my bird. I I asked them. They just came up. Oh. They said, uh, they said it's is cool. still like kind of like pecking at your shoulder. All according saying, to plan, telling... they said. Wait a minute. Hold on. All so according you... to Keikaku. So you're going to trust them over my bird? Yes, because you send your bird on like pointless bullshit every episode almost. <laughs> Who doesn't? I don't know a single person that has a bird that doesn't have them do point. <laughs> He's got you there. The, I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it's the in character. Okay, so what what's the what's the sit rap with me and this and this gal? Then is she just um, gonna kill me and throw my corpse in the corner of the room and walk out, or what? Uh, she tried to choke you out, um, and it didn't work. The at the same time that you were trying to convince her to. Uh, not kill you, not like to stop attacking or you'll smash the jar. Um, we'll go ahead and start a new round of combat. She gets to declare, for, uh, she has to declare first because her wits are lower than yours. Um, she is going to keep trying to um, choke you. Uh, oh Tessney is going to come over and try and secure the jar. Or he'd come last, so I shouldn't have said that yet. Uh, what is it that you want to do? Me? Yeah. If she's trying to choke me? Yeah, she is still oh, like straight up. Lady, you by the lady, neck, lady. The these wall. are these are steel spikes, aren't they? Um, they are made of. Um, I don't remember the exact metals. I'd have to do like some research. All right, <clears throat> I'm I thinking think the that these eyes are, are steel. Be... Yeah, I think they're so. gonna be flechette. Then I'm just gonna flechette them through her body through the glass. Are they harder uh, to push? Give me a uh, steel pushing roll minus three. Minus three. Heavily invested objects. Uh, what does that mean? They already uh, big anything magic. Anything that's already magic is harder to influence with magic. Ooh, I can't well, push. Not it. only that, but it, like they're packed together. Uh, how are you going to try and shove them through the glass? Just like, like just send the, the whole mass. Thing? Well, that wouldn't necessarily bring his rating down. Um, that would just increase the difficulty of it. Hold on a minute. Because can we still just end this? Like, I haven't rolled any dice for this. Like, can we still just go upstairs and go on about our business? Or do we still have to do this ridiculous? <laughs> if you give her the spikes, yes. <laughs> but then we will lose. We won't have any spikes. She's going to run out of there. I know how people We're are. We're not going to have think. spikes if you, like, destroy them. <laughs> Listen, guys. We're not gonna have the spikes, and exactly you're gonna be choked out, do. Brian. I oh. I will just say that like asking me meta game to change what's going on in game is not going to work. Okay, um, I'm just saying. So then we're de so then we're stuck to this then. Yes. Uh, what What is your declared action? My declared action then would be to smash the jar on the ground. Okay, and <laughs> Tessie's gonna go and try and. Uh, Make that more difficult for well, you. Um, when I say smash it, I mean steel push it with the spikes okay, on the so, ground, like directly um, by me. Your dice pool is going to be a two. <laughs> oh my god! Um, Tesney is going to what is his hey, thirteen fifty? <laughs> uh, Tesney has a roll of three, and Lady Vatine is going to choke you with all nine. Oh my god! So. Here we go. I got a three and a six. 
Snake Eyes! Okay, um, you are going to take four damage. Oh my god! How and, much health do I get? Um, you're going to take a grave Six burden health. that's going to be a bruised trachea. A bruised trachea? Where do you want to add great burden at? Uh, I'll go ahead and add it to you. So, um, what does that mean as far as the uh, spikes? They uh, slip out of my hand? or? Uh, you can go ahead and roll your two dice. Two dice again? I thought I had three. You said steel pushing minus... Oh, wait. No, that was right. Yeah, you said minus three. I got two fives. I got two fives. Tesney also got two fives. Oh, no! <laughs> Sudden death! Oh, shiza! So you drop the spikes, and you go and you try and shove them and head them hurtling towards the ground. And Tesney grabs it at the last second as the corner of the jar hits the bottom, and the tiny piece of it cracks off, and there's a small stream of blood that starts leaking from oh, my the uh, jar. Look what you made me do! You see this? Or wait, I'd say it like, Okay, <laughs> <laughs> <Kate> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and uh, Tessney goes and starts walking up the stairs. Um, she's gonna keep choking. Okay. So, uh, I one need last to... roll of four dice, to, unless you're trying to do something else to get out of it. Yeah, I would. I will. I'll do a seal push if I can. You there? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you want to defend with any dice as she's going to attack you? Well, wait, I'm confused. I thought if I if I steel push, why would I have to defend? Oh, uh, because be like she's going to get to act first. Okay. So you so can choose to make your steel push less effective. How much do I have? Uh, you've got five dice total. I am just going to... Oh my god, I've got three health left. Uh-oh. Can I just say I love this situation because pretty much everyone in the gang has more sympathy for her than Tajmail. Well, that's because you don't know my full backstory yet. <laughs> we know about your failed redemption hierarchy. <laughs> I'm just, you know what? I'm going to full on, I'm not going to defend against anything. <laughs> okay, um, you, your eyes go black as the last thing you see is her smirking over you. Um, and you fall unconscious, gripping the coins in your hand that you're going to launch at her as you take okay. five damage. Oh, so then that puts... I'm dead. Yeah, you fall unconscious. Um, we're going to add another grave burden of asphyxiation to you. Um, and uh, she, Lady Fatine is going to leave you on the floor in there. Um, Tessney has wa walked over to the chest and pulled out a couple of the bandages that he's used to try and stem the flow of blood coming from the um, jar. And they're both going to hurry up uh, hurry up the stairs and close the trap door. <laughs> okay. Um, Lord Falcom, you see them come up the uh, stairs without Tajmil. <laughs> he doesn't care. I I don't. It feels bad, man. <laughs> but I see. If it makes you feel better, we didn't even have to contrive a reason. He was trying to keep the spikes for himself and waste our time. I would have done oh. that even if we didn't have something else against him. Alright. Well, how are we getting out? Same way we got in. We'll head for that window and we'll get out clean. Should we all leave from the window with the prize? That'll put us way out in the open. Do you have any other suggestions? No, not really. Uh, maybe split up so and hide some of the spikes. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to separate the spikes from this. We're, we've got everything we need. We should just get out now before anybody notices something's gone amiss. Everything is all clear, right? Why is Glim here? Wait, Glim's gone? Glim's there when he wasn't there before. Oh, oh. He came back and we distracted the guard, but the guard might be back soon, so we better... Yeah, get let's going. just stop wasting time and get out of here. 
All right, let's extract. Uh, do we want to send somebody to tell Tony and Merida? Um, they'll. I'm sure they'll be fine. They've got the perfect alibi. We just need to get out. All right, on our way. I can take that from you if you need help. Um, <laughs> Tessie will pass it over to you. Okay. Uh, let's Surprise. jump over to uh, Tony. Give me a physique roll. Physique. Just a nudge. Um, try as you might, uh, and as much as you've been trying to do, you're not able to do much to fight the fire, which has still managed to stay, um, if not, like, contain, it's still only, like, a moderate threat. Uh, but then give me a riding roll. Um, do I need to drop two for riding a crowd? No, that's not necessary. I got fours and two nudges. Uh, but the power of your rioting um, has been so inspiring for all of the guards who have been pulled away from other things um, that after 20, 30 minutes, you're able to get the fire completely uh, put out and um, everything completely under control without a terrible amount of damage. Um, the one wall definitely will need to be repaired, but it seems like that's the only area. And Tony gratefully thanks everyone and cheers that the fire's been put out. And runs over to hug Fluffles. Okay, and then I assume you and Merida leave after that. Yeah. Okay, um, so, um, Falcom, why don't you go ahead and give me a physique roll? I'll roll for the rest of the game with you. All right, that's a pair of threes and a nudge. Um, Liv falls a little bit behind, uh, but Lady Fatine um, kind of falls back with her and like, kind of like puts an arm around her and helps her speed up a little bit. Um, you guys make it to the uh, the fencing on the outside, and Lady Fatine starts helping everybody up over that needs it, and you guys are all able to get away from the grounds um, safely and meet back up at that meeting house. Um. And I think we will visit that uh, when we come back next season. Um, Tajmil, uh, you don't know how much time passes as you're unconscious, but when you wake up, uh, standing over you is a uh, slender man uh, who's... Slender man? Well, he's slender, <laughs> uh, but he's looming over you with a commanding presence, and you feel... All of the emotion, um, except for your fear, just drain out of you. And suddenly all you can feel is terror as you look up and the tassels of this mist cloak kind of swirl around um, in, as he looks down at you. And he says, Wasing the knowing of my spikes. Wasing the knowing of my spikes. And we will pick that back up next season as well. <laughs> oh. uh, thank you guys so much for listening uh, I'm so very happy where everything landed um, pretty much exactly as planned but not how it planned it to happen so uh, uh, that was great we will uh, hopefully have a review episode for you guys to listen to uh, where we talk about the season uh, I'm not sure when that will drop but we will uh catch you guys with our next episode in two weeks regardless thank you guys so much for listening to season two bye bye thanks bye 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 mistborn and all related properties are owned by brandon sanderson and dragon steel entertainment the mistborn adventure game is a product of crafty games Special thanks to Steve Argyle for letting us use his artwork for the logo and to Boardroom Design for putting the logo together for us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at LLOS Podcast. Or give us an email at lostlegendsofscadriel at gmail.com. We hope that you'll like and share and give us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. I'm sorry, my fire alarm just went off.
Oh shit, are you alright? Oh no, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It was a, yeah, some smoke. Just the ballroom. Smoke from a bagel cooked earlier. Hit the wrong place.